His focus was more on understanding the awareness, the conscious mind, how do we process information, how are we a conscious being, that's what the focus was on. And so he did a study to measure the reaction time, the, or the awareness. My handwriting is, is it legible? W I L H E L M, that's Wilhelm, and W N D T, that's Wilhelm. W U N D T. Can you read at the back? I write a little smaller than I think it's a little it's dark. A little dark. Sorry. Huh? I think it's a little so, dark. Yeah. It's dark? was he basically put a ball on a table he just threw a ball on the table and asked people to push a button when they th when they thought that they heard the ball hit the table right then he changed the instructions in the second half and he said push the button when you are aware that the ball is hitting the table so in the second part of the experiment he wanted to see when the awareness part comes into the picture would the reaction time change what do you think which was faster when they press the button, when the ball hit the table, or when they actually were aware that the ball was hitting the table? What, Same. What would your guess be? Same. Same? Okay, anybody else thinks might, one might be faster or higher than the other? Yes? Do you think thought processes was faster? Yeah. Okay. Yes? When you're aware. The awareness you think was faster? Okay. That's actually what he found. He found that when the physiological process of actually hearing the ball hit the table, people pressed the uh, button much faster than when they were asked to think about their awareness. The awareness part took a little bit longer than their, so when they thought about their thinking, it took a little bit longer versus when, they, when the ball actually hit the table and they heard it, right? So he found out that there is some, so this, Imagine this is in the 1870s, right? So nobody is really studying the thought processes. And so at that time, it was a big deal that, oh, when you're thinking, you take more time. So thinking does occur. So there are certain kinds of thought processes that we engage in, right? The next person important in the history of psychology is William James. He was the one who brought psychology to the US. He is considered father of psychology in the US, right? And he was a professor at Harvard University. And he was the first one who actually ex did experiments and started studying psychology in controlled conditions in the US. Again, focused on how we process information, kind of mental abilities, that's what the focus was on. So the definition when we looked at it, most of the researchers in the beginning were focused, focusing on the mental ability or the mental processes part, right? The focus on behavior and the science part came a little later. Initially, it was all about the mental processes. also uh, interested in Darwin's theory. Does anyone know what Darwin's theory is? Darwin's theory of evolution. Darwin basically said what, what he said is. You have your hand up? Anybody who knows what Darwin said? Yes. You had your hand up? Oh. What was Darwin's theory of evolution? Right. He said that, and he basically what he said that with evolution, anything that's necessary for our survival, we take it ahead. Right? And so James wanted to prove that the thing
thinking processes, the thought processes, the mental abilities are necessary for our survival, and so they are something that are a result of evolution, right? So thinking, emotions, any kind of mental processing, intelligence, all of these are a result of evolution that are necessary for our survival. That was what William Jean's focus was on. Up until this point of time, it was all boys club in psychology, right? There were no ladies who were even allowed to study psychology. So, uh, wound was 1800s, and how about William James? Uh, almost the same time, a few years here and there, I think five or six years after, but around the same time. But he was in Germany, he's the first person to do this in the US, William James. This is the first lady who, uh, first lady, who, of psychology, you can say that, right? She is Mary Calkins. Mary Calkins was the first person who actually completed the requirements to get a doctorate in psychology. However, she was denied a PhD because she was studying with James, she was James' student, and she was denied a PhD solely because she was a woman. And she was not given the degree, even though she met all the requirements for it, right? However, she ended up being the first President of APA. APA is existent today and it's the American Psychological Association. Or Psychiatric Association. I stand corrected, she was the first woman president, sorry. Right? Then came the next lady who was awarded the first PhD. These are just a few breakthrough points that you have to know. Just make sure you write down the names and their important contributions to the field of psychology, right? Margaret Washburn was the first woman to actually get a PhD in psychology. Up until this point, mental processes is the focus in psychology. It's more about thinking, it's more about awareness, consciousness. Were they all in the US? These people were, yes. She ended up being the second woman president of APA, Margaret Washburn. In 1960s, the fields decided to change, and that's when the behavior part of the definition came into being. And the two people who actually brought the behavior part of the definition are these guys. J.B. Watson and Rosalie Wayne. They changed the focus of psychology on behavior. And they said that behavior is something that you can observe, and that's why behavior is something that you should be studying in psychology, not the mental process. 